This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Howdy there, Kyle Poke. It's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to the wild, wild west. We're going to be going to the saloon, or the town hall, or the hideout. We're going to be trying to take over and duel each other, rolling big bullets and trying to take each other down while buying buildings and constructing points. Today, we are talking about the latest in the Tiny Epic series, Tiny Epic Western. This is from Gameland Games. It's for one to four players. Takes, it says, 30 to 45 minutes. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of the game, you get to choose from eight different characters. Here's six of those eight to give you a feel of the artwork. Gunslinger, Chief, Rancher, Scout, Cowgirl, and Banker. The other two are the Gambler and the Outlaw. Each one of these has a special ability. We'll go over some of those later. And on the back side of these are player aids. Perfectly, there's eight of these, so you can have four players, each with their own player aid. Once you've selected your character, you will select your color of your posse. You'll get three guys, two standing up, one laying down. You'll also get one of the three different resources. We have gold, uh, force, and law. They all start at number one. They'll move up over the course of the game. Think of these as different resources to use for currency. Somebody will start with the dealer button and they will be the first one to go during the game. Here we have the game set up for four players. Now, we have a bunch of different buildings. There's the town hall way up here, the courthouse, the bank, the sheriff's office, the hideout, and the saloon. Notice they are different colors as well. And there's a, a little building in front of all of those. There's also some poker style cards in between each of these buildings, and there's one face down called the rival. Let's talk about how a turn works. At the beginning of each round, every player is going to get two of these poker cards. Pretty cool graphics, looks like old poker cards. You're going to be able to select one of these and keep them for the round. Now, there's different suits. It shows you here low to high on the player aid, and there are numbers from one to five. So you would select one and keep it. So let's say I keep this one face down in front of me. This one would go to the discard pile. Now starting with the player with the dealer button going clockwise, everyone's going to start placing their posse members one at a time on any of the buildings and in the spots that have people. This has nothing here, but over the course of time, there'll be some buildings that come out in the porch that you can use as well. But here, let's go here. Now with this one spot, I can do one of two things. I can either place them here with one foot on this side, and these are immediate things. So immediately, if I went here, I could get one force. Or I could go here and try to make sure that I have the best poker hand at this, and then I could try to win two of those four. So it's a little bit of pressure luck and deciding whether I think I have a better poker hand than the other people or what's called the rival. Now most of these spots get you resources. Like at the bank you'd get either one law or two law if you have the best poker hand at the end and you're standing up. Or maybe at the hideout you're going for an instant one dollar or trying to have the best poker hand for two dollars. However, you don't have to go to a different spot. You can actually try to duel to win the spot that somebody else went to. Let's say I went here and later on somebody else wanted to go here. Regardless of which side of this they wanted to go to, it's still one spot so a duel would happen. And when you duel, they're both going to roll these bullet dice, which are really cool. They roll really nice. And here the attacker is winning 6-2. to two. The attacker has to beat, not just tie, the defender. So let's say in this case the attacker did. The defender has a couple options to kind of defend himself even further. Now in this case the defender was me and I needed to do it. I could use basically one law. I have one. I could take this off to re-roll the die. Now if you're an attacker and you want to re-roll because you didn't win, you can go down in force. So you're going to spend one force or one law to re-roll your die. In addition to that, uh, in any order, you can actually flip over the poker card you got early in the round and add that to your die roll. Uh, but now everybody else knows what you have for your poker card. We'll talk about why that's important a little bit later. Well, let's say me as the defender did flip over my poker card, uh, were equal, and I was the defender, so I would win that, and I would just go right on top of them like this. And this player decided not to show his poker card R to it, or did not use, d decide to use any extra force to do that. So here's that. And also, when I would beat him in the duel, I would have gotten this wanted card. And what this does is at the beginning of sort of the, the, the buy phase, I would have gotten any one resource that I wanted. And if I have this card at the end of the game, which typically happens on the last turn of the game as we've seen. Uh, this would be worth two points at the end of the game. So this passes around. Anybody who beats somebody in a duel will temporarily have this card. So after everyone has placed all their posse members, we will go through and resolve all the buildings. Now for each building, if there's more than one player there, I uh, basically had beaten this guy. So I am the only one that's eligible to win this. 
So you would, if there's more than one player, all the players would com compare their hands. There's a two and a three surrounding this building, and I had the four. So two, three, four means a straight. That's really good. The other player, Blue, even though he's laying down, could not win this, but make it so I couldn't win it. If he had a better straight than me, or maybe a flush, he has a one, two, three. That's also a straight, but my high straight two, three, four beats it. So I then would then be able to take the two force. Now, even if you're laying down, uh, you, you can't win this, but you can win the pot on each building. This pot is essentially, hey, if you had won the hand, in this case, you would also get two law. But in this case, I won this because I had the best hand, so I ended up getting two force and two law for having this best poker hand against that person. We would resolve the other buildings the same way, but let's say we get to this building and I'm the only one here. I don't get to just take this, even though there's multiple players. I have to win this pot by going against what's called the rival. So the rival has a two, a three, and a five versus me here, but I had the four. So I had three, four, five, I would beat the rival. If the rival had beat me, even though I was the only one in the spot, I wouldn't have gotten either of these. But in this case, I'm the only one. I beat the rival for the poker hand for here, so I would get both the two gold and the two force here. Two gold, because I was on this side to win this pot, and I won the pot here, the overall pot for this, uh, this building here, uh, the hideout, so I would also get the two force. After we've resolved all the buildings clockwise to the town hall, we then get to go through the buy phase. And what we do is we take the rival's poker hand, with a, po a poker card with the hand that's there. So he has a pair of twos. And what do I have? I have two, three, four. That's better than one pair because I have the straight. Actually, it's a straight flush. That's amazing. No one's going to beat that. That's pretty much the best hand here. Uh, so I would, and in player, in, in, in card order, so I have the best hand, then second place, then third place, each of us would get a chance to buy one of the buildings that our posse is at. So since I have a posse member here and here, I get the first choice of buying one of these two buildings if I have the resources for it. Keeping in mind that you need the resources there. So this one needs one law, one force, and one gold. It's gonna get you one point, and it's gonna give you both, uh, it's gonna give you mining, rails, and wagons. We'll talk about that in just a moment. This one's gonna get me two points, but I need two force and two gold. Now you can only buy one building on your turn, most of the time. But also keep in mind, if the blue player had a better hand for me, for the town hall, even though he was wounded, he could still buy this card. The only thing you can't do when you're wounded is get the pot that you were trying for here, but when you're wounded, you could still get this pot and buy the card if you have the better poker hand of the bunch there. So let's go ahead and buy the card. Let's say I wanna get one this one, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. I would go ahead and buy it, and because I am the red player, I will place it on the red porch. Now the cool thing about that is in a future round, people can start going here. So as people start scoring cards, it opens up more actions. Some of the actions are immediate actions like this, where it says you can gain any two different resources if, if there are any wounded posse members, including those of other players. So if anybody got wounded that round, someone can go here, boom, and immediately get two different, two different resources. Now the other cool thing is if it's a player other than you, you automatically get a gold anytime somebody uses your building. Not from them, but you just gain one. So it's a really cool idea of having extra buildings and more actions each turn. Now, in addition to that, I have one of each of these. Let's talk about what that, what that does. Now, I said most of the time you could buy one building. There's some spots here like this that allows you, after everyone's bought their one building or had a chance, you can buy any leftover buildings that were there, which is really cool. Now, this is the only one I didn't show you earlier because these actions are pretty cool. This one you can make when you go here to the sheriff's office, you can make your, uh, your, your number go down by one or up by one. Or you can make your suit go down by one or up by one and they wrap. Lowest suit can go to highest suit, vice versa, and lowest number of one can become a five or a five can become a one. And this is very useful in manipulating your number to try to win the poker hands that you want. Also, this cool one has a pot. If you win this one, you can get one law and one force, or you can get a third posse member next round. So when you gather all your posse members back at the end of the round and you're placing them on your board, if you had gone to that spot and elected to get your third posse member, this guy would stand up and you would have three posse members next round to place. Also, by the way, notice that my special ability here was when dueling, you always have plus power. I didn't explain that during the fight because I didn't want to confuse you too much. But in this case, when I had fought him or I had dueled him over the courthouse, I actually would have had always a plus one power in those bullets. Now, the last thing I would do, since I had the best poker hand for the town hall, I would get to move any one of these score chips up one spot. This is third place, second place, and first place. And my card that I bought actually had one of each of these. So I'm pretty much even right now. It doesn't matter which one I move. Now, at the end of the game, there will, because there's exactly six rounds, there will, there will be exactly one piece on each spot of these. And then what happens at the end of the game 
is everybody would count up the buildings, the points in their buildings, and they would count up the number of icons they have for each of these. Whoever has the majority will get the higher points. So if you have the majority in rails, and this is the way it ended, you'd get five points. Second place would get three. For, for the, the mine in second place, it'd be three points and two points for majority in second place. And for wagons, it'd be two points and one points. And by the way, this scales for two players. Uh, so one, for one or two players here, you have the first place, second place, third place, only get three, two, and one uh, if you have the majority there. So that's how that scales. Now, as I get uh, more and more buildings over the rounds, they simply stack like this so everyone can see my icons, everyone can see my points, but only the most recent one I bought is one of the actions that they can take from that porch. And at the end of each round, any place that did not have a building because they were bought actually gets filled up. Any of the ones, uh, like the sheriff's office always has a porch. If this building got bought, this would sort of come down like this and a new one would come out. And then everyone would get new poker cards. We would deal the rival one and we would start a new round. And again, at the end of the sixth round, we would see uh, who has the most of each of these. And then of course, as I mentioned, we will have add up all the points and figure out how many points you get from having the most majority or secondary of the different icons. And then whoever has the most points is the winner. If it's tied the most uh, buildings wins. And if it's still tied, the most icons on those buildings wins. And if it's still tied, you guys share victory. Now let me just show you a few of the other special abilities here. The scout, choose from three poker cards uh, in phase one, if you have a total of five influence or less, and that would be your three different resources here. Uh, the rancher, at the beginning of phase two, you may pay one any resource to gain your third posse token placement for that round. Pretty cool. The outlaw, while dueling the attacker, gain plus two power if you do not have the wanted card. So if you don't have it, you can be a little bit stronger. Those are some of the other abilities. Now recently, I reviewed Tiny Epic Galaxies, and I liked that game quite a bit. There was a lot there for a little game. This game I liked even more, and let me tell you the reasons why, but before I get there, let me just say a couple of the only negative things I have to say about the game. One of them is the same thing I said about Tiny Epic Galaxies, which was, I wish the player aids and, and your little mat was a little bit bigger. In this game, the buildings took up the whole entire box, but again, the player aids looked like they could have been a little bit bigger to fit in the box. I wish they would have just made them a little bit bigger. The other and only negative thing is uh, the bullets were amazing. They were so fun to roll, but I really wish the the red bullet had red writing on it instead of white, and the yellow one had maybe black because white's hard to read and so is yellow. It would have made it easier to see the numbers from across the table. Now I'm really nitpicking here because those are the only two negative things I have to say about this game. This game was a ton of fun. I will also say this game was a lot heavier than I expected it to be. There is a lot to think about in this game. I mean, now Tiny Bit Galaxies was, there's a lot of things going on there, uh, but it's pretty easy to figure out. And it's not like super deep, but there's a lot of good things there. It's a good sort of light, medium weight game. This one, I would say you've got a medium weight Euro game in a tiny box. Um, for me, that takes 45 minutes to an hour. The box is 30 to 45, maybe. We took a little bit longer. Uh, but the game has a lot there. There's so much to think about in your turn. I love the poker aspect of this game. The cards, everything about the game looks awesome. A nice little circle there. And there's just tons to think about. You're trying to decide, where should I go? Well, if I go want this place here, why am I going there? Am I going there because I think I can beat the rival or somebody else with my poker hand? Or am I hoping I can just slide in there and hope to win it? Because I really need the card that's there and you can only buy cards that are in front of you. Of course, unless you use the, the leftover spot. Uh, but you're not sure what will be left over. And there's just so much that they go, okay, well, if I'm gonna buy that building, I need to have these resources. Where do I need to go to get those resources? Do I have a poker hand to even fight for those? Or do I just go for the immediate one resource of that? There's that little pressure luck element there. Uh, then you add the special abilities on top of it. Then you add which one of those three types of tracks you're going up for the end game scoring. And this game could be quite a bit of a brain burner. There's tons to think about, which I really liked. Uh, it added just so much more, I think, than Galaxy from the amount of choices you have in the game. Uh, once you learn it, it moves pretty fast. Dueling is a lot of fun. Rolling those dice and then deciding whether you're going to flip up your card and show everybody what you got for the, you know, the town hall uh, poker card. Uh, or are you going to just, you know, pull down your resources and fight it over? The duels happen a lot. Now, I was surprised that the duels happen more than I thought even in the two-player game. And I like how the game actually scales because in the two-player game, any players that aren't there, their colors actually have those porches, which give you more places to go, which you would think would be less dueling going on. But oddly enough, maybe it was just our play styles and such, uh, playing a few times two players, but there was still more dueling than I thought. So I really liked how the game scaled from two to four players. I liked it at every player count. 
and I think the game is excellent. Tons to think about, it's crunchy, you're, re you're, you're managing resources, you're managing end game scoring type abilities, you're, you're managing, you know, dueling other people, you're managing your secret card, There's you've got your special abilities. Good, good, excellent game. Uh, but I did feel like this was a medium weight euro in a small box. So if you're looking for that, this is definitely one to look at. I highly recommend this game. This was a ton of fun, but don't think it's as easy as Galaxy because it's a little bit more complex and there's definitely more to think about. If you're looking for something that's a little bit heavier than that, uh, but you still like this Tiny Epic series, this is an excellent addition to the series, and that's Tiny Epic Western. Now, I like this game enough that I'm keeping it in my collection because it's very unique, the way it does the poker and the, po and, and, and the worker placement. So for that reason, I am going to give this thing an induction to my gaming library with a saxophone serenade. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.